This is Corey Willis with PPI, and you're listening to The Diesel Podcast. I'm Adam Blattenberg from Diesel World. Hi, this is Dan, owner of Dan's Diesel Performance. I'm Christian Roth of BD Diesel. I'm Braden Fleece, and you're listening to The Diesel Podcast. What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on The Diesel Podcast. Today, we're going to be chatting with Nick from Dieselmatic Digital, and he's going to be talking to us about some really cool concepts and things that need to be done if you're a business owner or shop owner, to be able to find the right kind of customers and to be able to make your business stand out amongst the crowd, whether you're in a small city, a large one, and you're shipping out products or doing repair and maintenance, there are some definite things you're going to want to listen to in this episode. Before we get to it, though, we want to give a shout out to Dan's Diesel Performance. They have a ton of drop-in turbos, no matter what your goal is for your truck. If you go to dansdieselperformance.com, you can search based on the year truck that you have and different power goals. There's tons of different options that you have. If you have any questions about your truck or your build, make sure and give the guys a call or send them a message on Instagram or Facebook, and they'll be more than happy to answer those questions and make sure that you get your truck running the way that you want. All right, let's get to the podcast with Nick and learning more about making your brand stand out. Nick, welcome to the Diesel Podcast. We've got a really cool topic to chat about today, and I've had a handful of listeners over the summer have been like, hey, keep talking about the business stuff. I, you know, I have a shop, or I'm thinking of owning a shop, and I don't know where to start. So I know you guys are the experts at uh, at you know, helping businesses grow and, and you work with consumers, so I'm excited to chat with you today. Yeah, I'm very excited to, uh, to chat, too. There's uh, some nice emailing back and forth, seeing how we can provide some actual value to uh to the listeners yeah when i when we first started chatting and you were telling me you know what you guys do my first thought was there's so many people in the diesel community and industry that need to hear you know what you guys specialize in so i wanted to start there and have you tell us you know the name of your company what you guys specialize in and what you offer the 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 shop owner or the business person in the diesel industry yeah, for sure. I'll uh, I'll try to give the the shortest version possible. Uh, so yeah, we're our our company is called Dieselmatic Digital Inc. Uh, my name is Nick Adams. I'm the I'm the managing director. Uh, and so what we do is uh, provide diesel repair shops, heavy duty repair shops, with a full integrated digital marketing system. Um, we started it. Oh man, in the diesel industry, about five years ago, we started as a, uh, a really a generalist marketing agency that provided that kind of you know digital design, web design, marketing to a whole array of businesses. We ended up working with uh, just a local diesel shop, and and we just killed it for them. They were super happy with everything that we did. Their business over the last four years has continued to grow, I think, at least 50% year over year. Uh, and they, you know, just kept kind of building into, uh, you know, they'd refer to another client, we'd refer to another client, and we just saw this whole industry as something that, you know, the website, the digital footprint that people <laughs> put out there for their shop, they just, they suck a lot of the time, to be totally honest. And, uh, and so, you know, we found that we would work with a new shop who, you know, maybe they were working with three or four different agencies that were, you know, one was doing our website, one was doing a SEO campaign, one was doing Facebook and Instagram ads. And it's expensive. The agencies aren't very good at communicating with each other. And so, you know, about six months ago, we decided to take a jump and really build something specific for diesel repair shops that it's just all integrated. So where we take care of their website, their SEO, their whole digital marketing campaign. And yeah, we, uh, we are really loving it. <laughs> Getting some really good results for people. One of the things I, I have always noticed is, is trends. When I talk with uh, either a shop or someone who's thinking about it, is a lot of times, I mean, there's so many stresses, right? You've got, you've got to get the licensing, um, you're getting, you know, equipment, you're getting the space, you're running out 
um, you know, some bays and all that stuff. And usually the top priority isn't how do I maximize my digital footprint to the world. And so, you know, people will take it on themselves to put something out there, you know, make a, a Instagram or Facebook page. And it's just that there's not enough time. And I think once once they're into it for a while and they, they get jobs and they get employees and they start growing that customer base, that's when it becomes so important. And I wanted to, to just start off asking, you know, the question with all the people you talk to, what is the one thing that shop owners, business owners aren't doing that they need to do as they grow their business? Yeah, so we, we kind of, we're starting to really build out that exact model of like, you know, you have shop owners who are at so many different stages in the, in their, you know, in their business. Some are, like you said, just starting out, you know, maybe it's just them, they're renting space. Maybe they have five, you know, five bays and, you know, three mechanics and you've, uh, you've got someone running the front desk. But, you know, the thing that we're trying to build out that is really valuable uh, is giving kind of free content for those shop owners right off the bat. So one of the most valuable things that shop owners can do, especially when you're like, you know, early on, maybe you're just getting, you know, a guy's friend who you know to, uh, to do the website or you're doing it yourself on Squarespace or something. Build out individual pages for each of the services you're going to offer. So one of the mistakes that people do is just provide a list, right, of like, okay, yeah. you know, we're going to offer like, you know, your base amount of services, right? We have, uh, we're going to do like brakes, AC, exhaust, maybe some tuning, diagnostics. And they just put it all on their one page as a list. And it just doesn't give it doesn't give good credibility both to new customers who are coming in or to search engines. And that's the, that's the biggest thing. So when someone's searching, you know, like thinking about what, the, what your customer, what their intent is when they're searching, if they're trying to win, and they search 1998 Dodge transmission repair in your city, and all you have is <laughs> transmission repair as like one word on your website. You're not gonna you're not gonna come anywhere near where you need to be to show up for them, right? So if you have a separate page where you've built out services and you you know write a bit on the transmission work that you've done, uh, you, you know maybe some of the jobs, some pictures of the jobs that you've done. Uh, you're going to have a lot of, you know, a big, a big, uh, yeah, sorry, I've got a, I've got a six month old and <laughs> I'm uh, very sleep deprived and it's hard to find the words. What's the, you got a leg up, a leg up on the competition. There you go. <laughs> well, I think, it, it, I think of two things with, with what you just described is one of it is, is it benefits the customer because when they're searching for information, I know if I come across a website and I find a page and, you know, somebody, has taken the time to, you know, jot down, hey, this is what we specialize in. You know, if it's transmissions, we can focus on that for a second. Like, um, you know, rep we do repair, replacement, upgraded torque converters, valve bodies. We understand the diesel market. It makes me more comfortable as a consumer to, you know, call them up or you know, fill out the contact us form and, and send them some information. And also, too, for the business is it's a very expensive game to, you know, play in Google Ads and you know, depending on the size of the city, it could be very expensive. And so anything you can do that's free that allows you to show up in those search results and to pull in a potential customer and then provide them with some value so they do pick up the phone or you know fill out the contact us form would be really important for finding that right customer. Totally, man. And like you hit the nail on the head with, uh, you know, like if you start playing the Google Ads game, right, and paying for those, ad, those top ad spots, if you have dedicated pages, your cost per click or cost per acquisition is going to go down because the Google al algorithm wants to show searchers pages that are more likely to be what you're looking for, right? And if you have that specific page, right, down the line, when you start running those ad campaigns, it's going to be a lot easier to acquire customers for a lower cost. 
making your marketing budget go a lot further. Well, Google is so, they do such a tremendous job. Like I know if I search something like it, it's so much more refined than it used to be with what my search results are that it makes it easier for us. And then also, I mean, the same, I guess the same goes for social media as well as what kind of content you're putting out there and being able to attract that, you know, right kind of customer for your business. And I think digitally is where probably most people are finding a business or, you know, buying a product or, you know, a service or something like that is, you know, we, we go online, use a search engine or you see it on Instagram or, or for Facebook or something like that. And it's so, I think it's so important for the diesel industry moving forward is collectively, all, you know, as many companies as possible are, are doing what you mentioned to be able to provide that, I think that value and that, that quick information that we can get. We always want things fast. You know, I want to, want to pull up a, a website and see, Hey, these guys will, they work on what I need done. And this is, you know, how to contact them and those kind of things versus, you know, sometimes going on a website and it looks like it's out of the early two thousands and I, I got to scroll and they just, they, they lose me cause I can't find what I'm looking for. Totally, man. It's not mobile friendly. You're, you know, you're trying to zoom in on a smartphone or something like that. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely get it. I mean, we, you know, the, the, the really nice thing about working exclusively with, diesel repair shops is that we're, you know, we've learned so much about what customers want to see. Right? Like, how do you build trust with a customer right off the bat, right? There are a bunch of different avenues, but having that website where you have, you know, the services listed on individual pages and then, you know, taking it a step further and starting to tie in things like having, you know, before the contact us form or, you know, the asking to ask to book an appointment, having customer reviews right there on the website, right? And having customer reviews on your Google profile. That's something that, you know, it's a feature within tons of tons of software programs that shops run. And nobody uses it. <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. one of the number one I mean it's it's up there. I think, you know, it's Google algorithm is obviously pretty secret, but it's somewhere within the you know ten to twenty percent range uh, in your. So when you when you search on Google Maps for places, that's called a local search, and your ranking ten to twenty percent of it depends on how many reviews you have. If they're good or bad, if you got bad reviews, if you've responded to them in a, you know, somewhat diplomatic way, uh, you know, those are the things that, like, you know, we take, we take care of for all of our clients. And it just, you know, the fact that no one else does it makes it so easy to get to that number one spot where, you know, shops are going from, you know, when we start out with them, you know, some shops, shops are going from a call a week from their Google profile to five, ten calls a day. That's a big jump. Big change, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about reviews because I was thinking of something that's not even related to diesel, but um, sometimes I'll see or, or I'll read, you know, from different, like, pages where entrepreneurs are gathering and stuff. And I remember one time someone's like, oh, I'll just have my family and friends do reviews, and it'll look like, you know, I have customers is – I think consumers are very smart and you can, you can spot a genuine, a genuine review, something that, you know, came from somebody, you know, like you. And I wanted to ask you, you know, what, when these, in these companies, you know, they're like, Hey, I just heard this podcast, you know, with, with Nick talking and I want to get some reviews going. What should a business owner request from a, a past client or a current customer for a review? Yeah. So like, again, hitting the nail on the head, one of the things that, like you said, you can tell when someone has just a bunch of friends that, that you know, have written reviews. Yeah. The thing is that Google can also tell. <laughs> they know they know who friends are. They have a profile that's built around you. They know the locations of the people who are writing the reviews. They know, you know, they know a lot of stuff. So if you're closely connected to those people, they're going to know that they're not as legitimate as reviews. And going even further, you know, you have, you have 
things like local guides. Have, have you seen that on people's uh, Google profiles? Yeah. Yeah, so if someone leaves a bunch of reviews for a place, um, for different places that they've been to, and kind of are rating different places in their city or wherever they go, they gain levels in, in being a local guide, and as a result, their review becomes more influential on your rating. So if you get someone who, you know, is a level 12 local guide who has, you know, 45 reviews and they give you a one star, it's likely going to drop you a lot more than, you know, Jim down the road who <laughs> just gave you a one star, right? Um, but yeah, moving on to like what you're, you know, what you're asking about with what people what people can actually ask for from customers in terms of reviews, it's really important to do things like ask, ask them to talk about what kind of truck they had in, what kind of work they had done, uh, you know, employee names that they dealt with, um, the location that you're in, right, saying, actually just saying the city name is really important, right? Just gives, it adds credibility to the review. Um, and the thing that, you know, like you were saying uh, early on, time consuming to do this, right? For shop yeah. owners. Um, and so, you know, what, what we do is we build out, you know, depending on what platform your shop is on in terms of software, some are easier, some are harder, um, but you can essentially export customer lists monthly. And, uh, you know, most shops are going to track year make model, right? And so what you can do, what, what we do is have a monthly customer list that's exported, uh, and then we have included in an email that's asking a customer to review. Uh, an example that they can just copy and paste, right? So, hey guys, thanks so much for the service in your city name. Uh, you know, when my truck year model came in, it was not running well. When it left, it was, right? And then that's something that they can just kind of copy paste in there, hit send, edit it if they want, uh, and they're done. It doesn't take a bunch of their time. They don't have to get creative with, you know, figuring out what to write because, you know, you just want to put as few obstacles in front of the customer as possible. Yeah, I think of reading reviews and, and I'll do it when I'm looking for a service or, you know, something locally. And when I see those are like awesome work or a great place or something like that, I'm like, well, that's cool. But when, and I think especially with diesel truck owners is, you know, if, if you have a power stroke, and you find a repair shop and you see somebody with a six, seven power stroke and that's what you have. And they talk about their experience. You make that connection in a different way versus, you know, um, awesome work or something like that. And it, it takes more time, but I think that's, that, that's just something, you know, as a, as a consumer myself that it's like, I see that. And what I'm looking at on my smartphone is now made a connection. And then I'm either calling or, you know, filling out a form and, and wanting to give somebody my business. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it's, it's valuable to, to have that kind of thing. And that's, you know, that's the thing that, you know, whether, whether we're talking about, you know, a heavy duty repair shop owner and diesel repair shop owner or any other business owner, one of the main things that you're always dealing with is struggling where to split your time, right? Your time is the most valuable thing that you have. And, you know, I would say that especially early on for a lot of new shops, this is an important place to put a little bit of time, right? You can, you know, early on, you can spend, you know, you can spend an, an hour at the end of each month writing, uh, you know, a few customers, asking them for a, for a good review. You do that, you know, you get five reviews from customers a month for, you know, six months, you're at 30 reviews, you're, prob you're honestly probably higher than anyone in your city, right? Nobody just shops just don't focus on it that much. I think, you know, the other thing that comes to mind too is pictures and the quality of the pictures. And it could be with a product or something like that. But if I see a website and it, say it has all that, I, I landed on the page, um, 
the, the service page. They, they do what I want. I read some reviews. I like what I'm seeing. And then if I can see pictures of either the product or, you know, just different things like that, I don't know that I'm sure there's a marketing term for it or something, but I just know in my head when I see quality pictures, it just makes me feel comfortable to call. It makes me feel like, Hey, they took the time to get, you know, these quality pictures of the, the product or the shop or something they're doing or, you know, something like that. I'm going to give them a call. Totally. And yeah, it adds, it adds to your brand credibility, right? You know that, you know, that the shop is yeah, taking the time to work on things that are important. We actually just, uh, published a guide that's a, like a diesel repair shop digital marketing guide um, and it focuses on the, you know kind of boosting up your Google my business profile and you know pictures are a big part of it like when someone goes to search your business and see is on your profile the front sign and the whatever your entry is right wherever people wherever customers are going to go to pay if they can see that, that builds a lot of trust right off the bat, right? If I'm a new customer thinking of a new place to go, immediately in my head I'm considering, you know, maybe the first three, four shots that show up on Google. If one of them makes it really clear what the front entrance looks like, what I'm looking for, what I'm driving, yeah. it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a front runner in my mind. And then, you know, you go a little bit further and you have, you know, a good website with the service that I'm looking for and good reviews. I'm sold. <laughs> it's so, this, this topic fascinates me because it, you know, growing up, which was, you know, the internet was, I mean, it was around, but it was like the AOL disc and you have to unplug the phone stuff is I remember my parents, they never, there was no internet searching. It was a, a billboard. It was, you know, the yellow pages or white pages or something like that, or a TV commercial that doesn't exist anymore. And especially seeing the younger group of business owners who have grown up with having smartphones, grown up with iPads and just being connected to technology, when they develop or work on their website or give that a brand credibility that you talked about, it's so cool to see that because we're all we're all moving that way. We don't have time, you know, to look at the billboard on the side of the road. There's so much going on anyway, and we're not really listening to the radio per se to, you know, the ads that are on there. We just have these short kind of snippets of time and you got to catch us real quick or we're on to, to something else. And I think, you know, in a, in a medium or large city, there might be 10 competitors you have, there might be 20. And how are you going to differentiate not, not just yourself and your work, but just how you attract potential business. And that's why this topic is, it, it's so needed and so cool to, to be able to chat with you about and, and just learn more behind the scenes and things that shop owners and, and business owners can do to make their business stand out. Totally, man. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's exciting seeing like we, you know, we have lots of, uh, lots of guys exactly like you just said, uh, guys who are taking over for their dads, right? Yeah. Who it's a you know it's a shop that's been in business since '81, and the dad's like, I'm done, I'm tired. You're old enough to run this now, and uh, you know they they they're looking to uh, you know to kind of take that off their plate. Someone who they trust, right? Who knows, you know, they don't have to spend a bunch of time explaining to them what their business is what kind of service they provide. Um, you know, we can just come in and you know, get get their whole digital presence running pretty quickly. It's, uh, it's really it's really exciting seeing that. And like, you know, those guys like, you know, they're they're usually running shops who, you know, they're they're in they're already in the you know two three million plus a year range, right? Um, and they have established marketing budgets. And like, you know, one of the things that I always like to be very, we're, we're very open with is our, our fee, right? We, we run a $2,500 a month flat fee. And it's, it's really fun, like, having that conversation with customers. There are, two, there are always two types of people. You have one that's sticker shock, right? Yeah. They've never gone and paid anyone to, you know, kind of do their marketing. Uh, and they're like, I can't afford that, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, 
right? And, and that's why that's why we publish this kind of free content that you know that helps get them to the spot where they're you know more comfortable spending that money, right? Giving them the kind of stuff that we do um, so that they can do it themselves. Then you get the other type of guy who has worked with you know dozens of website designers and SEO companies and market companies that you know they're all each one of their retainers are you know fifteen hundred two grand plus a month and they're maybe working with three or four of them at a time and they think like holy shit twenty five hundred a month to do all this is like that's a that's a deal, <laughs> right? And so, you know, we, we try to, like, you know, educate customers early on with, like, what, you know, what should your marketing budget be? And, you know, the basic, the, the simplest, quickest way to break it down is look at not where you are but where you want to be, right? So if you're a guy who's doing, you know, maybe you're in your second year and you've got, you know, you're probably going to do, like, 500000 this year, Uh look to where you want to be in the next, you know, three years and say, like, okay, if I want to hit 1.5 million in the next three years, I want to, I should be having about a 3 to 5% marketing budget uh, for that, which is about forty-five dollars to $75,000 a year, which works out to be about, you know, $3,500 to $6,000 a year, uh, or a month, sorry. Um, and so that allows you to, you know, kind of break down like, okay, yeah, so 2500 a month, and then you have, you know, kind of ads end when we start getting into paid ad campaigns on top of that. And it fits, you know, pretty perfectly into those growing shops. And then it fits even better into the ones that are, you know, three, three four million dollars a year. Right, yeah, there's definitely a scale of... Of, of where people are at. And that's, that's kind of the thing is, you know, with this episode is we could probably do a 20 part series of four hour long podcasts about it, but there's so many individual questions people are going to have and, and things that they might want to know. And, and for anyone that's, you know, listening and they're you know, maybe ready to take that next step or they've already, you know, they are in that range and they've been marketing forever and they're just not seeing the results they want. What's the best way for a business owner to reach out to you and be able to chat with you about their business and what their goals are and, you know, putting a plan together? Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, just look us up, Google us. Dieselmatic uh, is our company name. If you just search Dieselmatic on Google, it'll come up. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, too. Uh, it's diesel.matic. And, you know, we what we try to do with that channel is, like, really provide that free content to followers, to, you know, shop owners, uh, and give them, like, just really simple step-by-step -step guides where it's like, all right, you're, you know, sitting at home on a Wednesday night, you've done the day, you maybe just have your phone or computer. Here are a few things you can do, you know, to kind of help your your digital, the digital side of your business. Um, and, yeah, yeah, just give us a shout through any of those. Um, and if you want to email, you can hit us up at info at dieselmatic.com. Nick, I appreciate your time today and providing some some incredible knowledge and insights that I know a lot of business owners are thinking about. And even if they're not thinking of, you know, having a diesel shop or they're not in diesel, but they have another kind of business, what 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 you talked about, it, it transcends everything, whether it's the trades or retail or, you know, storefront, whatever it is, that's all things that, uh, you know, as, as a business owner, you got to think about in ways you can you know, do that brand credibility that you talk about. So, we appreciate your time and, and chatting with us and, and look forward to doing it again in the future. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Don't forget, Diesel fans, make sure and head on over to dansdieselperformance.com. Check out their complete lineup of drop-in turbos. And if you have questions on your particular setup, needed to do a, you know, per, per, perform a certain task or control EGTs if you're towing heavy, just give them a call or send them a message, and they'll be more than happy to chat with you and make sure you get the right turbo for your truck. Until next time. Keep the shiny side up.